Hello, boys and girls. Rufus and I are here to join you on April Fool's Day, and I am not creative enough to come up with any creative April Fool's joke for you today, but I am going to start a new chapter book, and so we'll see. I don't think Rufus will sit and listen, but he might. I'll let him sit here if he wants to. I think he's, he's off and running. So I decided to read a chapter book to you. So we'll just read a couple of chapters today, and then will continue this um, through the rest of the week. It is kind of a short chapter book, and there are several of you that um, are about ready to start reading books like this. So this is an A to Z mystery, and it's one of my favorites. So A to Z mysteries, there's one for A, one for B, on up through the alphabet. This is C, the canary caper. So these are mysteries, which means that the children in this book have to solve something. They have to figure something out. So here are our main characters. We have Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose, and they are going to solve this mystery for us. So let's find out what happens in The Canary Caper. And these are written by Ron Roy. Chapter one. Dink Duncan opened his front door. His best friend, Josh Pinto, was standing on the steps. Hi, Josh. Come on in, said Dink. I just finished lunch. Josh hurried past Dink, wiping his forehead. We sure picked the hottest day of the summer to go to the circus, he said. I just took a shower and I'm still hot. Dink grinned. You took a shower, let's see, that's two showers this month, right? Ha ha, very funny, Josh said. He opened the refrigerator door and pulled up his shirt. Ah, that feels good. It won't feel so good if my mom catches you, Dink said. Josh grabbed the apple juice and flopped into a chair. You're funny, but it's too hot to laugh, he said, pouring himself a glass. Where's Ruth Rose? It's almost time to leave. She's waiting next door. Dink put his plate in the sink. I have to run up to brush my teeth. Forget your teeth, the circus is waiting. Dink grinned and pointed to a, a clown-faced cookie jar on the counter. Grab a cookie, I'll be right down. Josh made a beeline for the cookie jar. Take your time brushing, he said. Don't eat all of them, Dink said, leaping up the stairs. Dink, his mom called. Are you running? Sorry, mom, he called back. We're in a hurry. Thursday is half price admission if we get to the circus by one o'clock. Dink brushed his teeth, yanked a comb through his blonde hair, then charged back down the stairs. Donald David Duncan, his mother yelled, no running in the house. The phone rang in the kitchen. Got it, mom. Dink grabbed the phone, watching Josh stuff a whole cookie into his mouth. Hello, Duncan residents. Dink listened, then said, we'll be over in five minutes. He hung up. So since it's a chapter book, there aren't pictures to show you on every page. <coughs> <clears throat> we'll be over where in five minutes, Josh asked. Mrs. Davis's house. You know her canary Mozart? He's escaped. What about the circus, asked Josh. Half price, remember? Dink shrugged. So we pay full price. Mrs. Davis needs our help. They walked next door to Ruth Rose's house and rang the bell. Four-year-old Nate Hathaway opened the door. He stared up at Dink with huge blue eyes. Hi, Nady, said Dink. Is Ruth Rose ready? Nate's lips, cheeks, and t-shirt were smeared with chocolate. He was holding a raggedy stuffed dinosaur. She froft, Nate said with a full mouth. Dink laughed. She's what? Ruth Rose showed up behind Nate. Mom, we're leaving now, she screamed into the house. Josh clapped both hands over his ears. Ruth Rose, you should get a job as a car salesman. Then you could yell all day and get paid for it. Ruth Rose stepped outside and closed the door. You know perfectly well that I'm going to be president, she said sweetly, and it's saleswoman, Josh. Ruth Rose liked to, liked to dress in one color. Today it was purple, from her sneakers, which are tennis shoes, to the headband holding back her black curls. While they walked down Woody Street, Dink told Ruth Rose about Mrs. Davis's missing canary. Mozart, get out of his cage, Ruth Rose said. I hope he doesn't fly over here. Tiger would swallow that canary in one bite. Your fat cat could swallow a turkey in one bite, Josh said. Ruth Rose rolled her eyes. Tiger is plump, she said, not fat. Ratio, 
Mrs. Davis was standing in the doorway with her large of, your, of her large yellow house when they arrived. Thank you for coming right over, she said. Mrs. Davis held a handkerchief to, and her eyes were red. I didn't know who else to call. We don't mind, Dink said. What happened to Mozart? After breakfast, I hung his cage out back so that he could get some fresh air. But when I went to get him his lunch, his cage was empty. I'm sure he's somewhere nearby. Don't worry, Dink said. Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose ran around to the backyard. Mozart's cage was hanging in an apple tree. Split up, Dink said. Check all the bushes and flowers. The kids searched every tree, shrub, and flower bed. Mrs. Davis watched from her back porch. Any luck, she asked Dink. He shook his head. I'm afraid not, but we'll keep looking. It's such a beautiful day, Mrs. Davis said. I hope you kids have something fun planned. After we find Mozart, we're going to the circus, Dink told her. The circus? Well, please don't let me stop you, Mrs. Davis said. Mozart knows his cage. I'm sure he'll fly home soon. But Dink could tell that Mrs. Davis wasn't really so sure. Okay, but we'll call you later, he promised. Then they said goodbye to Mrs. Davis and headed for the high school. The Tinkertown Traveling Circus had set up on the school baseball field the day before and would leave town Monday night. The kids cut through a bunch of circus trailers and trucks on their way to the admissions gate. The sides of the trailers were painted with pictures of clowns, tigers, and elephants. They arrived five minutes after one, but the ticket lady let them in for half price anyway, a dollar each. What do we do first, Ruth Rose asked. Let's eat, Josh said. No way, Dink said. You already had lunch and you probably gobbled down half of my mom's cookies. Let's walk around and see what's here. They watched birds do tricks, dogs ride on ponies, and a chimp dressed like Elvis sing into a microphone. They all gulped when a tiger trainer put his hand right inside a tiger's mouth. Guess the tiger's not hungry, Josh, Josh said with a grin. All the circus people. <clears throat> In Clown Corner, a clown dressed as a giraffe danced on stilts. He kept time to the music by snapping his yellow suspenders. I have to leave soon, Ruth Rose said after a while. My mom needs me to watch Nate while she goes shopping. The kids left, cutting through the town rose, the town rose garden to get to Woody Street. Dink snapped his fingers. I just remembered. My mom and I can set up my tent in the backyard. Can you guys get permission to sleep out? No problem for me, Josh said. Nate's never slept in a tent, so I'll bring him, Ruth Rose said. And Tiger, she added sweetly. Your little brother, Josh yelped. Great, we'll have our own circus. A four-year-old monkey and a man-eating tiger. Ruth Rose laughed. Don't worry, we'll bring our own tent. Dink and Josh dropped Ruth Rose off at her house, then continued it on to Dink's. There, they went inside and called Mrs. Davis. She says Mozart hasn't come back, Dink told Josh after he hung up. While they were pitching Dink's tent, Ruth Rose came over. Nate trailed behind her, dragging his extinct-looking stuffed dinosaur. Hey, where's your man-eating cat? Josh asked. Ruth Rose dropped her tent on the ground. She looked as if she had just swallowed something nasty. What's the matter, Ruth Rose? Dink asked. Tiger's missing, Ruth Rose said. And my mother says she hasn't been home all day. That was chapter one. We'll do chapter two tomorrow. Have a great day.